Hello everybody, ciao a tutti and welcome to Art with Miss B. Here we are on our third practice with watercolors. This time I will guide you into a practice uh, step by step using the three steps that we use for our first and second practice. So we sketch with a pencil, we outline with a fine or extra fine permanent markers, make sure that it's permanent and not soluble, and then we finally paint with watercolors. Remember what I said in the previous practice, if you want to change something in the design, you can absolutely do it. So you can make it a little more complicated and sophisticated if you want to challenge yourself a little more, and if you think of yourself more on intermediate, advanced painter or artist, or you can keep it as simple as mine or even simpler, eliminating some of the details so that you feel that they are too challenging for you at this stage of your practice. For this project, you need a watercolor paper. If you have a journal, I encourage you to work in a journal. If you don't have a journal, just a piece of watercolor paper, as big or as small as you have it available. And then once it dries, let, you know, keep it together with your previous practice. A pencil for drawing, an eraser to erase the pencil after we do the outlines and an extra fine markers, any brand available. Micron markers are the best, but they come with an expense. If you have a Sharpie, do it. Of course, the result might be a little different, the quality of the line, but it's still the process that we want to focus and not the product. Finally, use any watercolors that you have available. If you don't have a many tertiary color in your palette, remember that we learned together how to create a tertiary color mixing the secondary color with primary colors. Remember that there is a beautiful video that you can rewatch and maybe speed it up because it was a pretty long practice since I paint. We painted together the whole color wheel, including primary, secondary, and tertiary. So you can go back and and look at that for reference. Uh, you can mix this color if you want to have a more of the earth tone, more of the you know, pastel type of tone. Remember that you can mix the white with the color so you will have this nice tint. If you want to create like a, a little darker, uh, still like a soft and dull color palette, you can mix the gray with the color finally for the shade. So the darkest uh, area of our painting, you can mix the black with the colors. If you have a multiple colors of your choice, just have fun. Remember that the focus is on becoming more familiar and more confident in using watercolors and understanding how much water do we need. So how much blending do we want on our paper? We are using the most traditional technique, which is a wet on dry. Dry is the paper and the wet is the brush with watercolors. You need a cup with the water, a couple of brushes, so maybe just one. Size should be medium, medium, small. And finally, maybe a piece of paper, paper towel, so you can uh, dry the brush in case you need it. I'm going to switch the camera. I will guide you step by step. Remember to do you. You can watch me doing it to speed up the video and then practice in your own convenience. Or you can really pause the video now after instructions, prepare your material, materials and practice with me. You can use some nice music in the background, which allows still to hear my voice so I can guide you better. And uh, let's enjoy this other practice and let's become a better and better in painting with watercolor. I'm going to switch the camera and then I will see you at the end. Okay, let's start our design and we start with the pencil. Remember that you can add details or you can take details off. You can do something completely different or you can do something as similar as possible as mine. Do you and just accordingly also to your skills, right? And the level. So we're gonna start to feel like some close up of flowers. We want the petal to be very nice and irregular, of course, right? Poppy flowers, you can do your favorite flowers. We are not doing a like a realistic interpretation, we just do like a by memory. It's just for us to have a nice composition that we can use to keep training our skills with watercolors, right? So we go with a pencil, nice and light. Uh, we can add the tip of one leaf. So we have multiple opportunities 
to train that. Maybe we can do one over here, the taller that is about to open up and blossom. Very simple. Then maybe we can do some nice daisy. Remember that the petals are natural. As I always say to my students, we are not concerned that they don't look the same. Actually, the more they are different, the better, right? Because we want variety. And when we paint, when we restart the painting, don't really feel that you have to use my color palette. Actually, kind of get an opportunity for you to explore your own color palette. Which do you think is the best option for you? What type of colors would you like to see in, uh, in your piece, right? What are your favorite colors? You need to be, you know, uh, happy and joyful when you do art. So you need to really bring your artistic personality, even if that personality will drive you in creating something that is unconventional and untraditional. We really don't care, right? It's the process that we are learning together that counts. We can create some like an idea of pattern with the pencil and remember that we are preparing so this is step one, basically, and then we are going to go over with that micro marker or Sharpie or any, any extra fine permanent marker that you uh, have available, right? Then maybe we can just do some leaves of grass because this is a very close, it's a very like close up of flowers so we can do that to create a nice background and a little more movement and interest into our picture not too many details we're gonna focus really really on the technique now more than the design once we have enough flowers, and once again, you can have some more, you can have some less, you know, some flower less, so you do you, we are going to outline a little bit. And in the outline, we can also create the patterns, right, and create this uh, optical illusion of, you know, texture, implied texture. So when we paint the with watercolor, we're going to still, still see this implied texture and our pieces will be really, really, really interesting. It doesn't really matter if when we go over, we change slightly the direction of our lines because remember that then we are going to erase the pencil so no mark with the pencil will be visible anymore. Keep going. Lose it up. We don't have to look really too perfect. Actually, in many, many cases, we are really scribbling with the pencil. Sorry, with the marker.
don't know. I definitely am ready for the spring, the spring here in Utah. It's coming but very slowly, slowly that I expected, that, that I wanted. Um, the weather has been a little bit all over the place here. Today is sunny, but we have an horrible, uh, strong wind. So I better do some art inside the house. Temperatures are still kind of chilly. And so plants and flowers are starting to blossom in right now. I really look forward to see beautiful, colorful flowers in the grass. Remember, we can create implied texture by doing some pattern and really scribbling some scribbles on our paper. We want these lines to be really, really loose, really imperfect. You can also start to do some cross hatching when you do like a diagonal short lines in a direction and then in the other, you overlap them. So we create some nice value pattern, which is the alternation of, you know, light and darkness. When we will paint on top with the watercolor, you will notice that they are going to really help uh, to bring the value. So once again, the alternation of light and shadow, light and darkness, whatever you want to call it. And they're going to give your piece so much more um, movement, right? And point of interest. I'm doing, as you see, very short strokes, uh, and then I go on top of them with very short strokes uh, in the different like directions, in the different direction. It's like a diagonal and diagonal cross hatching. Very nice uh, uh, way to, even when we do drawing, I really like to use cross hatching uh, to shade uh, and create this idea, the illusion of implied texture. Sometimes I like it more than just traditional shading, but it's, of course, it depends on what we are learning, right? We can also do, instead to do cross-hatching, just hatching. When we don't want something so dark, but medium dark, so you don't overlap, you just go one direction with your diagonal strokes. I was forgetting the petals here. And here again, we can do texture, imply texture, and value just using different type of lines. My how important are lines, right? Just using different type of lines so we can create so many different optical illusion, illusion of, as we say, light and darkness. So we can do value, imply the textures. In some cases, when we did together some entangle or just some specific pattern, you notice that I basically built the whole design using lines and those lines can give us even the illusion of space, right? and three-dimensionality. The more we practice them, the more fluent we will become. So remember that if this project, it doesn't come at the end exactly as you envisioned in your mind, it's part of the process and you have to feel happy about it and embrace it because it is supposed to go that way. We learn a little by little.
and I will never stress enough how important it is to keep your stuff organized together and work in a journal maybe, or if you prefer, work on paper pads, so loose pieces of paper. Make sure that you save them all in a uh, folder. Maybe you can even uh, uh, draw the date on the back, write the date on the back, and some notes. So you will be able to go back, uh, compare and contrast, uh, see your improvement. Maybe you can redo the same project uh, just using a, um, a different color palette, for example, or maybe play with the technique. So far we have been using a wet on dry, which means that we are doing dry paper and we wet the brush and the watercolor. Sometimes you will wet just a, a really the bare minimum amount of water that you need in order to paint because you want to have a more control. Maybe I'm gonna dark up the inside. So when I will paint it, it's gonna look pretty, pretty, pretty dark. And this type of zigzag, very tiny zigzag and scribble, I think that is amplifying the texture of the center of the flower. And even on the leaves, we can do some nice uh, cross-hatching or hatching. So once again, we set, the, we really visualize when we want our darkness spot and our lighter. Don't rush through this step. If you prefer to practice, uh, you know, the practice is too long for you, maybe you can just like uh, watch me doing it and speeding up the video, and then you can practice this in multiple sections. So one time uh, you can do the drawing and the outlining, and then in a second time you will be able to do the painting. But whatever you decided to uh, do, do not rush it. It's also a very good exercise to learn about to regulate the pressure of our hand on the paper. You know, you want to barely touch the paper. So learning how to control the pressure also is very important, right? I want these leaves to be a little darker because it's covered by this one. And since we are not painting from observation, but we are painting from memory and imagination, feel free to really play around with, it, that, with this darkness area, right? And creating this beautiful, nice value pattern. Without overthinking, just adding, I'm doing very nice, thin, pretty quick strokes. So when I will paint the petal on my poppy flower, this area is going to naturally uh, be darker. And so it will give us also sort of a color pattern, right?
it don't be shy in dark up. It's really, it's really beautiful to add this alternation of darkness and light. The more value pattern you can create, the more kind of movement you're giving it to your uh, piece. These petals are pretty big, so we might have fun. You see, I'm just barely touch and go, touch and go, just touch. And remember that we won't lose type of line, so you don't have to go right precisely. So you kind of create this nice quick stroke on the petal. I will do the same here. I want to definitely dark up a little more the center of the flower. We can scribble. I'm really literally scribbling inside, which is also so fun and liberating. So let's do some scribble. Let's dark up our petal as well. A little more. With this type of really, really, really quick strokes. A little more scribble. I really want to do a little more cross hatching for the petals in the back so that we really look pretty dark. Some texture on the petals of the daisy as well. So we review like hatching, uh, cross hatching, uh, strokes, curved, straight line, scribble lines, so many lines, right? And now when we think that we are all done, we are going to put the marker away and we are going to erase the pencil. Erase it very well so we won't be able to see any lines from the pencil. You can use really any eraser that you have available. I love this one just because they don't leave crumbles around. And we have our design all done. Now it's time to do some painting. You can have two brushes, so just one medium small. And then let's start to paint our flowers. I'm going to start, as re remember, even if this is a reference of poppy flowers and these are daisy, you can really do whatever you want on your piece. So there is no like a really concern at all. Have fun. Use the color as you want. Keep the water near, like in the water and the paper nearby so you can uh, tap the brush if you took yeah you know if you picked too much water and you need a little more control remember that we are learning how to control the amount of water in a way that in this case it doesn't blend too much and allowed us to paint inside the design that we created if you tip like the brush just in the water since it's already spoiled by the colors that we are using, you will have a lighter version of the same hue, the same color. Watercolor are fantastic for this reason because they allow us to really understand the, the saturation and the value of each color just with the you know amount of water that we want to that we are using. And blending with more water will be we result in a lighter saturation, right, of the color. The color is always the same, but it changes in its saturation. And it change also in its value. Now we are not very, I'm not using like a, to block uh, out some area from the color so when we paint with watercolor as you probably noticed we cannot go from a dark to light once the color is on the paper there is not really a way to light it up so when we need a very very light area we are going to block them from the painting so you will leave them white and you will paint them very lightly so you will really moderate uh, the intensity of the color that you're using just because you know that there is no way for you to go back 
to a lighter. So don't go too dark. There is always a chance to paint over. But if you want to keep some area lighter, just don't paint at all on top of this area or paint with a highly blended color, which is going to result in a very, very light, uh, very light saturation of that color. But as we say, we are doing it little by little, we are doing baby steps. So this is our beginner, intermediate friendly practices. And now I want you to focus on the steps that we have been learning together with previous practice, so which are drawing, sketching with the black, because it helps you to kind of nail down the design and control the colors, and then wet on dry or even almost dry on dry because we want to control the water and we want to uh we don't want it like to blend too much so we learn how to control the media and then we learn also how to let it go in future practices I'm gonna keep painting, maybe dark up a little red. Remember also that if you do not have the same palette that I'm using with multiple watercolors and you have a more limited palette, we did exercise and we refer many, many times to the color wheels and the color theory for which just by using primary color, you can do secondary and by mixing primary and secondary, you will have your tertiary mixing the white, to those colors is going to give you the tint, so like a pastel version of those colors, and mixing the gray is going to give you the tones. Finally, mixing the um, black is going to give you the shade of the same color. So you can create your colors because you know how. And if you don't remember, go back to one of my first video, and that is a watercolor sorry uh yeah it's a watercolor it was a watercolor practice so perfect actually for these exercises about the color wheel so i guide you step by step into painting a color wheel and understand how colors interact with each other so Go slow, the watercolor will dry very quickly in this type of practice because we are really not using too much water. If you want to go back and dark it up again, remember that we can dark up what we cannot do, we cannot light it up. I want this one to be almost a burgundy, so I'm going to mix a little bit of dark brown in this red. So this one, since it's still close, is going to feature a darker red. Sometimes when you paint, you think that you're covering the uh, outlines and the pattern that we created with the um, Sharpie or the micro markers, but no, don't worry because when the watercolor absorbs, it will be, uh, it will light up and you will be able to see again. I'm gonna add a little bit of orange just to warm up this nice poppy flower. Right, so we kind of mix it together with the red, so we just have a little warmer color. Now, let's go on the daisy. I never know what color doing the daisy. Probably light, light violet. Maybe I can have fun. I'm not a big fan of violet, but maybe I can mix it with the white to create an extremely pale, as we say, a tint of that. Uh, violet so it's just really light there you go you can go darker on top of our pattern that we created on the petals and then just dip it in the water dip in the paper oh actually it's still pretty intense but you can feel your petal one by one with that same color, just a little bit more water. 
If we go outside of the lines, it's not a big deal. We have happy accident all the time. And this is also the beauty of the watercolor and in general, the beauty of art. So we need to be open-minded and embrace what is coming. I'm going to do the same. I'm going to recreate a little bit of my violet. I'm going to probably peel it up with some more white this time and see what happens. Nice and light. In this case, I will probably go on top of the hole, like because it's already pretty light. So I will paint the hole like petal one by one. And today my singular and plurals are all over the place, but that happens sometimes when you speak multiple languages as I do. Then I want to dark up a little bit of violet. And now I'm ready to go over the bottom of the petal when we create that texture. And I will use the darker violet to go also and paint the petals in the background. And there we go. If you have a little bit dark on your tip, you can kind of go back. Nice. Probably I will add kind of nice value pattern on these petals as well. I'm gently touching the paper to dark up the violet on some areas of these petals. Then I'm going to take a little bit of black and I'm going to paint inside a little bit too much water. So I'm going to paint inside the, the uh, poppy flower that by now it's dry. So it won't blend it too much. And maybe I will dark up this one as well. Barely touch and let it dry. Now let's go to the green. You can choose any green that you want, darker, lighter, colder, warmer. Remember, you can always mix the yellow with the green, so you will have a lighter green. We want to go slow, nice, barely touching the paper. And remember, friends, if you are a beginner, sometimes you won't be able to stay exactly inside the lines. And once again, it doesn't matter. It's going to be a beautiful piece and you're going to get better and better in the technique that you're learning. And honestly, imperfection, uh, imperfections is really our what makes our pieces original and beautiful. Otherwise, can you imagine how boring it would be to just have the same pretty picture over and over? My goodness. No, thank you. Right. Art is just so much more than pretty picture. We need to redefine beauty and pretty for us. That is what we need to do. Look, for example, I'm left-handed. As you notice, I probably, you know, I had a little accident over there. And it's okay. I will embrace it. And when I will paint the sky, I will be able to cover, if I, to cover it if I wish to do so. Maybe I decided to um, uh, keep it. And it is okay. You do you. Oopsie. I have a little bit of something. Let me close the door because my husband and my son are going. I'm becoming very loud as usual. Back with you. Nicely, try to stay inside the pad. Don't stress yourself. Move your brush and your hand slowly. Control and don't lose the sight of what you're doing. Always look at what you're doing. I'm using the same type of green, but I might light it up a little bit 
warm it up actually, because as we say, we cannot light it up, but I will warm it up once it dry. I will probably go over in some area of the leaves with a, a warmer green. So then when it dries, it will blend with this colder green, sort of emerald green, which I love so much. and steady and we bring it all the way now we can switch and we can use a different type of green for the grass maybe a lighter one very different from the first one so we can create some contrast you barely touch the paper and use most of the color down A little bit more. If you feel that the brush is getting too dry, just dip it inside the water gently though. Don't keep it in the water too long. So it won't become socket wet. a bit and off we go stay with me i know we're almost done well not almost done but more than halfway done And now let's pick another green for the daisy leaf. So we have a variety, right? Remember, you can mix your green with a yellow. You can mix your green with a little bit of blue. You can mix your green uh, with a little bit of white, to, you know, to have a more of a pastel green. So if you don't have as, you know, many colors available, be creative and make your own colors. So I was able to fix and blend in the little spot that I got, the little like, yeah, spot that I got on the leaves because I'm left-handed. So you see, you cannot see that anymore. I still see this one and this one, but I will be able to cover it up as we said. Up, control. Let's control it. Very bright green. I really like it. I like the difference between a warmer green, a colder green and a very very bright and intense type of green i'm gonna paint the whole thing and then we're gonna just do some more shading on top of our leaves and flowers before we paint the background actually we can start to paint the background so they dry and then we do the final touches for the background you can do whatever you want you can have a blue sky you can have a pinkish sunset in sky i will go for a light blue as i say i really need that spring coming so i'm gonna be inspired by the spring for my color palette Very nice. Keep painting.
we go between and once again if something happened it's okay no i need to tell you this because i was while i'm painting there uh, just look so you understand how my mind <laughs> works so before painting i started to make my own jam uh, like a strawberry um strawberries uh, cranberry no cranberry sorry um raspberry and blackberry jam and then i completely forgot forgot that i had it on the stove and i decided well i think that i want to paint so i sat down with you and i'm painting and so my husband <laughs> was kind of say you know making me just wait the jam is i say do i turn it off or do i turn it on my so it's okay he has the situation now under control but, you know, it's funny, right? My goodness. My priorities. When you go like a between a tiny space, just make sure that the water in your brush, it's really minimal, right? So you can really control. And as you notice, I'm not pressing like that, but I'm barely touching the paper. The pressure that we use with our brush is extremely important because the lighter, the better. We can control it much better. If we press, if we press too much, the color will blend, will expand, right? And that happens also when we use an alcohol marker, for example. We really need to be mindful and intentional about the pressure that we use with brushes and with other media. The right amount of pressure, which is an extremely good fine model skill exercise, right? We control and we coordinate our brain with our hand. We take our time. Keep going. Sometimes so once the watercolor are drying, we have to go over to smooth them down a little more, like and blend them together. You can do it just dip in the brush, just in the water, and then paint on top of an already painted area. But you can also pick a little bit more color if you want the color to be really intense and well saturated. When we do background, also it's an incredible opportunity for us to really test our skills with the amount of water and be able to see how different amounts of water we react with the same colors, right? And will give us less or more intensity and saturation. The brightness of the color. Go slow when you go between the petals. Deep in the water, I'm gonna blend this area a little more. We don't wanna see like neat lines in our watercolor. We want something cohesive and smooth. Beautiful things about this technique with watercolor that allows the color to really uh, uh, dry very quickly. And so we can rework over, we can notice if there is something that is a little bit out of balance for our eyes and we wanted to make a change. It's something that we can do pretty quickly.
to make this piece. Stay with me, friends. We're almost there. You see, I was able to blend the blue on top of the little spot that I got with the light violet when we were working. And since I'm left-handed, sometimes it happened. And I was able to blend it in, no problem. I need to stay focused and stop thinking about the gem that I was making. I will let you know, you know, if I was able to uh, cook it and save it. Anyway. Here I want maybe a little bit of blue. There we go. So I really, I'm working with an almost dry brush now that I'm going into very small area. And actually, once again, it's not a big deal. If your blue will go a little bit on top of the red, then you will have a nice purple shade on your poppy flower as well as on your daisy if you use the red otherwise you will have a different type of shade if you decided to go for a different type of flowers or just same flower but your own color palette Spread it all up, start to see, coming, a little bit more water, a little bit more blue, tap in the water again to make it blend easily. So you see now I'm using the more water because I'm painting a bigger area. I don't need to control the brush that much. And then I gain the control again once I'm getting close to the poppy flower. Nice. A little bit more. And we go inside this narrow space. We control. Since I'm using a little less water, now the blue is a little more saturated than this one. So you see, I just go over. So I blend the two saturation of blue and everything looks more cohesive, right? So we want some variation, light or darker, but it has to be cohesive. We don't want neat lines to divide, right? want something really really smooth and well blended as much as possible considering the technique that we're using and considering the design go back here and we bring the blue. Just 
Thread in the collar as much as possible, blending it here, going over. You can move your brush into some sort of ovals and circle, like. So it's like more control between the petals, so less water. We go over again. A little bit of water because we want to start to blend this part better. So we don't need that much of control. And we want to blend and make the light, the blue, a little less saturated. Then we go over more saturated area and we kind of blend them together. Every time that you see that is a harsh transition, you can go and smooth it just with a wet brush. And finally, I'm going to light up a little bit with a little bit more orange. You see, I use a little bit at the beginning, but I want to light it up a little more, warm it up a little more. And so I will go over the lighter area of my poppy flower with this nice orange. It will, you know, it won't be so visible once it dry, but it will definitely warm up the petal in some areas, not all of them. And the same, I wanna do it here, but I will go with a, a yellow. Pinkish, actually. And I will just work carefully with not too much of water, just to kind of warm up the petal and create a little bit more interest and variation in the light or the illusion of light. The same, I'm going to use the yellow to create a sort of a very lime green, and I will do the same on the leaf, not everywhere. So we will have some variation once the leaf dry, and the green is kind of not all the same, but it gives us an illusion of the light that hit the leaves or the grass in a different way. So we go just like that. And we are all done. This is our design. I wish I could see yours. It was a lot of fun. I sacrificed mm. and handmade the marmalade for this piece because I abandoned it on the stove because I decided that I wanted to paint. It helped me so much in settle down. Today is very windy outside and the wind really unsettled me. So I hope that this practice helped you to spend a very, very good quality time. And I switch the camera so we can say goodbye. So friends, I hope you had fun in this practice and I hope that it was helpful to become more familiar and more comfortable with the watercolors and this technique of wet on dry or almost dry on dry, right? We are learning so much how to control the amount of water depending on what we want, depending on the spaces that we need to fill. And we are using these step-by-step -step, uh, practices. Step one, we draw. Uh, with a pencil, step two, we go with an extra fine markers, any brand that you have available. The micro markers are, of course, the most professional, but they come with a little cost. But it's up to you how much you want to invest, of course. But even if you have a Sharpie, it will do the job. What it is important is that it has to be a permanent marker and not water soluble. So step two, we do the outlines and we create texture using a cross hatching, hatching, right? Different technique of strokes, so stippling and more. Then we erase the pencil and we finally paint. 
I hope that you feel now more confident and uh, you will stretch the practice as much as you want and as much as you like. Today, everything happened while I was painting. There is a huge, strong wind outside that was unsettling. Then I forgot that I was doing, uh, before starting the painting, I was making my handmade marmalade. I'm really uh, picky about food and I want to eat healthy, so I prep everything from scratch, but probably I lost this marmalade. I'm going to I'm going to let you know how I need to go and rescue it now. And I see you very soon with another practice with watercolor. I will let you practice a little more independently in my next video. So make sure that you practice with me since the very beginning. If your intention is to become more familiar and comfortable with watercolor, please consider subscribing to my channel if you like my content and the effort that I put into it. Like my video, send me comments and questions and let me know how your practice went for you. And I see you very soon. I wish you a wonderful day wherever you are. Ciao a tutti.